And what is up, y'all? Welcome to Game Day with Heavy Cardboard. Well, I guess solo Game Day with Heavy Cardboard, as it's going to be for most of the time. Where we, let's see, let's start that over, shall we? Welcome, y'all. Welcome to Solo Game Day with Heavy Cardboard, Teach, Play, and Discuss, Medium and Heavy Strategy, Board Games, War Games, 18xx. I am your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by, well, y'all. So let's do this, shall we? Today, I am bringing y'all. Agricola. All right. So yes, uh, Agricola, uh, designed by the Uwe Rosenberg, published by let's see, Z-Man Games, published by Lookout Spiel. Uh, who else? Thank you, Jess, for the cameo on that. That is homage to uh, board games with Scott. Uh, so Scott Nicholson, way, way, way back, about ten years ago or so. How do you pronounce it? Huh? It's Agricola. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, so Agricola, emphasis on the second syllable, uh, is Latin for farming. Now, the original plan was for me to have a lot of fun with you guys and be like, wait, no, we're playing the war game, the, the, the game from Hollenspiel. But as it is, that, that was, we thought, would be cooler to uh, do a little homage to uh, Board Games with Scott. So there you go. So welcome everybody watching live around the world as well as after the fact. All right, big thank you to all of the patrons who helped support this show. I am very, very grateful for all of the support because uh, without y'all doing that, I can't do this, which means I can't entertain you guys and hopefully spend some, a couple hours with you guys most days, uh, especially while we're going through this horrible pandemic. So stay safe out there. Remember to isolate, uh, social distance, whatever it is you want to call it. Be smart, be safe, and let's hang out and play some games, shall we? All right, quick reminder, if you guys do like the show, give it a thumb down below, please. Really, it does help the channel. I really would appreciate it. Also, while you're there, subscribe, hit the little bell notification so that whenever I go live, you get notified in case I don't promote it on Twitter and Facebook and all those other places. Last but not least, you want to support the show, you can go to pledgehc.com and join the herd there. If you think what I do here is worth a couple bucks a month, I certainly would appreciate it. Go to pledgehc.com, support the show there. All right, Agricola. So, it's been forever since I've played Agricola. This is going to be fun. Well, it's going to be entertaining for you guys. Eventually, it will be fun for me while I struggle through this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to be pretty. I have a feeling for me. Uh, subsistence farming in the 17th century was never easy. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I've been told it wasn't easy. And in this game, everything's very hard. This is arguably one of, along with Kalis, kind of the quintessential worker placement game. Now, the solo game plays much like the multiplayer game. However, there's just no other players. And there's a couple other cards that aren't being used. Outside of that, it's pretty much the same game. Now, like I said, I've, I've never played this solo, first off. And I've, it's been a while since I've played it. So I actually used Board Games with Scott to refresh my memory on everything. So, without further ado, if you guys are ready, let's dig into... Agricola, or Agricola, as it is so named. All right, so Misery Farm, here we go. Oh yeah, Mayfair did, there are 17, I think, different publishers, 17 or 18 different publishers that, that had have published this game, all right? So I am playing the base game. I am doing something that I said I don't do, okay? Normally, we play with Farmers, in the, uh, Farmers of the Moor. However, today, with it being just a solo game, as you can see out here, I've chosen to just play the base game. We are playing with the base uh, uh, minor improvements as well. The reason being, since this is the first time 
that I am playing this solo, I assume that the uh, solo uh, gaming is going to go on for quite a while. I have a feeling that we're going to be self-isolating for a number of months going forward. So therefore, I'm going to be playing this multiple times. So I figure I'd start with the base game. Then the next time, maybe we bring in uh, Farmers of the Moor, and then we bring in other decks, because I have a plethora hefe, of different decks. So without further ado, let's get into Agricola. Now, this is a older version. This is not the revised version, but I am going to be playing with the, uh, I think these are from Mayfair, I think, some of the goods uh, here. So I am going to be playing with those. Uh, other than that, we're set up for the base game. Now, we are not playing the family version. We are going to be playing the regular base version, which means we are going to be playing with the uh, uh, occupations and, and minor improvements and such. All right. So here we go. Yeah, here we go. All right. So the one, two differences, I guess, with the ba uh, solo game versus multiplayer. If you were familiar with the multiplayer, well, the multiplayer has these six cards that will come out. These are not used in a one and two player game, so therefore, I just kind of cut it off because it saves a little real estate and we're not going to use that part of the board anyways. All we're going to be using is these and then the regular stuff as is, all right? So what is it you guys are looking at? Well, we have different action spaces out here, and these are going to be more action spaces that come uh, become available each round. So as you can see, the game takes place over four rounds in the first stage, another three in the second stage, two, two, two for one. So you're looking at a total of 14 rounds in this game. Each round, we're going to flip over one of these cards, which is going to be a worker placement or action selection space. And we're going to be placing our workers out here to be able to go out there to do things. All right. Now, the goal of the game is victory points. Now. Victory points are going to be used on this board right here, or, you know, I'll be honest, this little cheat sheet is actually a whole lot clearer, and that's on BGG, but basically what this is going to say is, if you don't have something in this game, diversity is life, if you don't have something in this game, you're going to lose points for it, all right? If you do have something, at least usually, usually, at least one of something, however, in this case, it would be two plowed fields, you will get some amount of points, if not at least one, up to four points, depending on what it is. And then there's going to be some additional scoring over here. And ultimately, diversity, variety, and trying to score a lot of points with those various things is going to be the goal of the game, all right? So what is it you guys are looking at? We have various action spaces out here, more that will come available. At the end of the 4th, 7th, 9th, 11th, 13th, and 14th round, we will have a harvest everywhere that you see a harvest uh, spot on there. We have a simple little reminder of harvest time, what happens there. We have the minor improvement deck. We have the occupation deck. We have a little uh, overview of the round cards here, which also on the back of them shows the scoring that's available or that will happen at the end of the game. We have a handy dandy little score pad right here. And then we have on this board, we have what are called the major improvements. Now, the major improvements are going to help us be able to produce food because this is the quintessential Uwe Rosenberg game in which you have to feed your workers at the end of each har or during each harvest. Now, I mentioned that there are two differences, there's really three I guess, between the solo game and the regular multiplayer game. The first one is the stuff that I showed you that's off camera, we don't use those spaces. The second one is this three wood actually is going to be two wood instead. And the last thing is when we have to feed our workers, it requires three food as opposed to two food, except the babies still only require one food to be able to food. All right? All right. So 
That's pretty much what you guys are looking at out here. Like I said, we have the major improvements that we're going to be able to acquire there. Then we have our home board. Our home board starts with our two workers in our wooden house, wooden house here. And then, uh, oh, you know what? You're right. These are only for farmers in the moor, aren't they? See, I am not used to that. I told you, I haven't played the base game in forever. So thank you for the reminder. So we have our baseboard out here. I believe this is how we set this up for the base game. It's been forever. And then we have storage spaces up here for our various resources, which those resources, and forgive me, let me see if I can remember. We have wood, we have brick, we have stone, we have reeds, we have wheat, we have carrots, and we have, I think it's cabbage? I think is what it is. All right, there we go. And yeah, and then off board, off camera, we have our fences, we have our, uh, oh shoot, they're not farms. They are uh, barns. And then we have our additional, our babies that hopefully we'll, we will get out for more workers over here. All right? All right. And then the aforementioned resources there and then off board we also have various upgraded buildings and we have plowed fields all right so that's everything that you guys are uh, that that essentially is in the game oh and the beggar cards hopefully we don't need any of those as well all right, so what is it you're trying to do? Well, there are six stages in the game, but really there are a total of 14 rounds. Each round is divided into four phases. The four phases is we're going to flip over one of these round cards and hey, that's where we're at. Okay, that's what round we're in. And then after that, the second one is we're going to replenish goods and animals. So wherever it says so, Three wood. Remember, it's going to be two wood in the solo game. So we will put two wood out here, put a clay out here, a reed, a fish, et cetera, et cetera. We will do all of those things. Then the work phase. The work phase is it's worker placement or action selection. So I'm going to place one of my workers out here onto an available space, and I'm going to do whatever the space says. Pretty simple. Then after that, I will place a uh, the next worker, do that. Normally we would go in turn order, but it's a solo game, so easy enough. Then the fourth one is we're going to return home. And returning home is, well, pull our family members back and then do it all over again. Now, obviously there's more to this game than just that. The beginning of the game, I'm going to shuffle up these two decks and I'm going to deal myself seven cards each. Now, in some, uh, in a multiplayer, you would draft these, but in a solo, I'm just gonna be, we're gonna deal with whatever we get dealt, and you guys get to play along with me with these cards, okay? Which, we're going to be able to go out and play these cards based on where we go out here in the various spaces out here. So let's go over what the available spaces are to begin with. And yes, I guess they are uh, stables, the, the, the buildings. All right. So build a room. Well, in order for us to be able to extend our family and to have babies, every worker must have their own room. So to be able to do so, and you know what? Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on this. All right, so over here on this first building right here, we have build rooms, okay? If it's a wooden hut, it's going to cost us five wood and two reed. If it, we upgrade to a clay hut, then it will cost us five clay and two reeds. A stone home will cost us five stone and two reeds, okay? And or, meaning in addition to that, or in lieu of that, I could build stables, two wood per stable. All right, easy enough. So whenever I go there, that's what I can do to that space. The first one is the starting player. That's always going to be me. So don't really care about that, but build a minor improvement. Minor improvements are going to be those hand cards that I mentioned earlier. The next one is take a grain and place it into your personal supply. So you just start with a grain. That's kind of nice. Good. Then plow a field. Well, we have places out here. We need to be able to plow the fields to then be able to plant things out here 
to be able to do so. Now, it is important to note that when you plow a field, all, a, all, all subsequent fields must go orthogonally adjacent. Everything in this game is orthogonally adjacent. So whenever I extend my house out here, it must be orthogonally adjacent. I could not do so here without first building in one of those two spaces. So if I start it up here, then my next one would either go there or there, so on and so forth. Easy enough there, we can move on. All right, next is an occupation. So to play an occupation, uh, a player's first occupation is free. Each additional one costs one food. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. And occupations are going to be those hand cards or half of the hand cards that I have at the start of the game. And the last space is the day laborer. Take two food and place them into your personal supply. So right here, take two food. All right, easy enough. Then, moving over to the center board here, you'll see two wood, one clay, one reed, or one food, plus any other spaces that get revealed as the game goes along. So those are the available actions to be able to, or to be able to, to begin with. Now, the major improvements potentially will become an important part of this game. Now, those major improvements, as you can see here, are going to, at any time, convert goods that we have in our supply up here into more food. Because again, food is going to be uber, uber important. Getting a food engine is going to be super important early in the game so that we're not wasting actions. This game is all about efficiency, so being able to get maybe a cooking hearth early on would be beneficial uh, so that we're, we're less concerned with getting us food and being able to do the things that we're trying to do. So past that, honestly, I think that's probably enough to get started. I will go over, I already basically went over the end game scoring, but I will do so a little bit more. For plowed fields, you're gonna get points. For empty, unused, so anything that is empty like this is going to be bad. Then, so plowed fields are good, fenced pastures, that's where our fences are going to come in. Our fenced pastures are going to be able to hold our animals that we're going to acquire. Then for grain, vegetables, sheep, wild boar, and cattle that we have out here, we're going to get victory points for. Then lose a point for any unused space, so if it's unfenced and just completely unused, we'll lose points for that. For each fenced uh, area with a stable, we will get plus one point. For each clay hut, notice these are wood, so I have to upgrade these to clay huts. That will give me an additional point for each stone hut. They'll be worth two points apiece, and they have to be upgraded evenly. Three points for each family member, and then any cards or bonus points that I may have acquired from playing cards out here, I will score. There we go. In a nutshell, that's Agricola. It's really not a complex game rules-wise. So, uh... Let's go and get into it, shall we? So let me bring up the camera and chat. I think whenever I do these solo streams, I feel like I don't front load as much so that we can just get into it. Plus, I don't have anybody to talk to here, so it kind of makes sense, all right? All right. Wow. Brian, if you're watching, cheers. Thank you for the bump and support, man. So hold on, let's do this proper. Thank you very, very much. Really appreciate that, Brian. Thank you. All right. So I had to scoot over for this part of this. So here we go. Um, a moment. Okay. Sorry. All right. All right. So let's... Uh, what I wanted to do, because I'm worried that you guys always think I precede stuff, whether it's multiplayer or otherwise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these four. I'm going to shuffle up all of them. There, there, there. Okay. I'm going to do that with each of them. Because I'm always worried that you guys think stuff is just like, I don't know, to make it easier or harder. Because I struggle enough. I'm not trying to make things harder on myself, but at the same time, because I struggle so much, I would imagine that you guys 
don't. I'm just going to do this under the table so I can't see. Uh, you guys think I, I, I rig this. Although, with as much as I struggle, you would think I don't. The sixth one's pretty obvious. It's just by itself. What's a good solo score? Hell if I know. But, so yeah, actually, Peanut Gallery, you guys tell me. What's a good solo score? I'm going to like half that number and then set the over-under on that. Over-under on Glory to Rome's. I'm going to go three and a half. This is Misery Farm. All right. I'm also going to shuffle the uh, minor improvements. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Says I probably marked the cards, right? Well, I definitely appreciate that, Brian. Thanks, man. I imagine Edward realized how bad the order of the cards were, so he has all mitigating it. Exactly. All right. You guys cut. Here you go. There we go. So we're going to deal ourselves seven of these, and you guys, we're going to go through it together. Four, five, six, seven. There. Shuffle the occupations. I am not a card sharp. I am not. I play poker. But all, all that is, is we get two cards. I don't deal. Okay, according to Revise, 50 is a good score. Yeah, that's the, I'm not going to get 50 points in this game. I'm going to set the over-under on 35. So, I'm not trying for a good score. I'm just trying to su survive. Okay. All right, and you guys cut. I'll cut a little thicker on this one. There we go. And seven cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So now, let me move everything off there. We'll go ahead and go through the cards together, shall we? All right. So let's, uh, let's do this. So let me gather up my 14 cards. We'll go through the occupations first, okay? So occupation number one, I don't know these cards. I do not play this game enough, unlike those out there that, that play a ton of this. I do not. So the hedge keeper. In all of these, obviously, these are solo cards, so they're all going to be the plus one. And these are going to be in the base game, so these are not the complex or the advanced ones or any of the special decks out there, okay? So there we go. All right. Uh, whenever you build at least one fence, you can build three additional fences without paying additional wood. Oh. You can only place fences if they enclose a complete... Hell yeah. So, a fence it can't build yet, so don't worry about it. But this is good. That's awesome. Nice. Okay. Next one is the grocer. Pile from bottom to top. A root clay, da 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 da, -da as you see on that. At any time, you can buy... Uh, the top item for one food. Well, that's kind of awesome. All right. I'm liking this draw so far. So far. So number three is the baker. During each harvest, I can bake bread at the start of your feeding phase if you have an improvement <coughs> Excuse me, with the bread symbol. When you play this card, you can bake bread as an additional action. Awesome. And whenever you use the bake bread action, which is not available yet, but it will become available somewhere in the first stage. So somewhere in the first four rounds, we'll be able to do that. All right. Tony says, doesn't it take 63 or so to, uh, to win to move? Oh, I'll cover that here in a little bit. All right. The next one is the meat seller. If you have an oven, you can change your animals into food at any time. Take two food for each sheep, three for each boar, and four for each cattle. Well, all of a sudden, that kind of changes things. I was going to completely, I, the only real plan that I had was to skip the ovens. But I'll be honest, not, it, because I have this occupation, maybe all of a sudden, that's not bad. That's actually... The only thing that doesn't do that an oven or that a uh, fireplace or a cooking hearth does is I can't cook vegetables. So if I go heavy animals now, that covers food. 
That's kind of nice. This is fantastic. A stable hand. Uh, whenever you build at least one fence, you receive a stable, which you must build immediately. Okay. And you don't have to build any wood for the stable. Wow. So, the stable hand, along with the hedge keeper, well, hot damn. That was fantastic. Okay, so how many is that? Wow, that's, uh, that's five. Okay, next. We have the mushroom collector, so somebody going out foraging. And Christos, didn't you go out foraging yesterday? That was awesome. Um, you have to be very careful, and, and you have to know what you're doing or so you don't die when you go foraging for mushrooms, right? Well, it's the eating of the mushrooms that'll kill you. Whenever you use a family member action, take wood from an action space. You can leave one of the wood on the space and take two food in exchange. Well, wow. All right. And the final occupation is the mason. Once during the game, at any time after your stone houses reaches at least four rooms, you can just add a fifth room for free. Wow. Okay. But fences and animals, that's so far. So there we go. That is our occupations. Now our minor improvements. Oh, sorry about that. The first one, we have a riding plow. Now, one other thing I guess I should point out is you'll notice occupations do not cost anything to play. To be able to do so, you simply go over there to play an occupation down into your tableau and you are not limited to how many you can do. It is simply a action that we're, you're going to do, okay? So, getting back to this. Now, you'll notice that these have a cost. This is four wood, and it mu I must have three occupations already out, all right? All right, twice during the game, when you use either the plow one field or plow a field and or sow action, you can plow three fields instead of one. Wow. But notice I have to have played four occupations and spend four wood. Okay. Okay. But, but that's for plowing is for vegetables, which we're going to focus less on vegetables so far based on our occupations, I think. The raft requires two wood, but no other prerequisites, and it's worth a coin at the end of the game, one point. Whenever you use the fishing action space, and the fishing action space is right here, which just gives you a food. Whenever we do that, you receive an additional food or a reed. So it's actually two food and a reed, or, or a food and a reed. Okay. Not great, but not bad. Okay. All right, stone house extension. Well, we just had the mason. What does this do? Requires a reed and three stone. And it says, when you play this card, immediately extend your stone house by one room. The room does not cost anything, but you must pay the cost shown to play the card. After you play this card, pass it to the player on your left. Uh, in the solo rules, all that means when you see these arrows is get rid of it, it's out of the game. So it'll never come back to you like it might in a multiplayer game. And one nice thing is, let's say we have three stone rooms. We play this for a stone room, and then we play this to get a fifth stone room. And we don't have to pay for the fourth or fifth stone room. Well. I see a plan coming together already, all right? And yes, everything accumulates. So whenever we add to these spaces, if there's something already there, we just add more to it, okay? All right, so our fifth minor improvement is a fishing rod. Whenever you use the fishing action space, you receive one additional food. And from round eight on, you receive two additional food. Well, all of a sudden, that fishing space becomes a lot more lucrative if we play this, which costs a wood, and we play the raft, which costs three or two wood. Interesting, so between those two, that's kind of nice. All right, we do like that these have good synergy. This is, uh, this is unexpected, seeing as we didn't draft. The penultimate uh, minor improvement is a bean field. Whenever you sow, you can plant vegetables on this card as if it were a field. And it, but it doesn't count as a, a field when scoring. 
Okay, which this is kind of awesome. So if I have a small field out on the board and I sow it, I can plant vegetables on this card and not have to use up the space on my board. I missed the minor improvement, so I have two left. Up here, which I can use for animals. That's kind of awesome. All right. All right. And now the penultimate. Let me make sure I count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I have. This is the penultimate. The builder's trowel. You can renovate your wooden hut to a clay hut at any time without using the renovate action, but you have to pay for the renovation. This costs the wood, wow. All right, so now we can go from wood to clay pretty easy, excuse me, pretty easily. All right, nice. And the last one is the drinking trough. trough. Uh, each pasture, which for animals, with or without a stable, can hold up to two more animals. Well. I see what we're gonna focus on doing, apparently. All right, so I'm going to play my cards over into my Tableau area because this way I can keep it zoomed in here. Maybe not, hold on. Now that I think about it, we can push this up here. We could push that up there. Go a little bit more, there. And now we have room for our Tableau right there. First player marker, cool. All right. So 35 points, that's what we're gonna set it on. I'm gonna say it's successful at 35. So place your bets on me or the game. And by me, I mean us collectively. And uh, let's get started. And Laura, all right. Laura said, uh, what was it? Uh, this kind of makes me wanna own a copy of this for solo play, had it years ago, got rid of it, kind of regretting it. There you go. And there is the app, but I'll be honest, there's something I just don't like playing apps for board games. I just don't. I would much rather do this. Yes, it's more fiddly. The app takes care of all. I just feel a lot more immersed in this and I don't feel it's as... If I'm gonna play a video game, I wanna play something like, uh, well, Witcher 3, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, Horizon, yeah. Skyrim, stuff like that. So Doug says, now I got to raise my minimum 10 points after that draw. All right, fine, fine. I'll say 45. So over under three and a half glory to Rome's and 45 points. Okay. Oh boy. All right. So it's first round. Here we go. Hey, fences. All right. So let's go ahead and show you guys the actions that are available again. Okay. So we have it there, okay? And even though I don't normally like to do this. There we go. Yeah, build rooms right there. So we need to get a, a food engine going. And I'm gonna look at my cards again real quick. Fence building, oven. Okay. Okay. The grocer, but that's not really a engine. What I'm looking at is wanting to, I don't really have anything for a food engine card wise right now. Okay. Uh, a moment, let me. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, so we have two actions. So we're gonna wanna build fe fences. We're going to want to, so we're gonna wanna build fences to be able to get animals. So we need to get animals. Uh, we want to extend our house. To be able to extend our house, we need wood. We start with nothing, I believe, right? We do not start with any resources. Let me make sure, I'm pretty sure we don't. No, we do not. Oh, and now we need to seed the board. So let's see. Let me get the resources here. 
So we have, remember, it's going to be two wood instead of three there. It's going to be one clay, which clay, bricks, so on and so forth. Then one reed, and reeds are these guys. And we need a fish specifically. Food is food, it doesn't matter the type, but I mean fish, right? Uh, then we'll go ahead and put two food on there. Even though it doesn't get restocked, I'm still going to put the food on there as a uh, reminder to myself. So we'll put a couple of uh, chicken legs on there. We will go ahead and put a grain there as a reminder. And the rest, we are good to go. All right. So we have our resources. So phase one is start the round, flip the card. Okay, it costs one wood per fence to be able to build. We have no wood to begin with. Replenish the goods and animals. We've done that. There. Uh, then work. So here we go. Yeah, the fish meeples. I'm a fan. So. And the chicken legs. All right. So what is it we need to do? Well, We're going to want to build a room, first off. Not first off. We want to get a food engine going. We have to feed. We're going to owe six food. We're going to owe six food at the end of the fourth round. We have none. But I'm not really terribly worried about it quite yet. So we need two reeds and five wood to be able to build a room. And again, looking at our occupations and our improvements, getting the raft early might not be a bad idea. Yeah, I think getting the raft out early is going to be important, and again, just as a reminder what the raft is going to do for us. It requires two wood. So whenever I use the fishing action, we get an extra food or a reed. Well, we're going to need the reeds to be able to build rooms. So there's that. But we do, oh boy. We're gonna need, I said, six food. So we're going to let stuff add up. But we need the two wood to be able to play the raft, I think. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to go out there and go ahead and take the two wood for our first action. And I'm debating whether or not to take the reed now. One, there will be two more there, then there will be four there. I think we're good. I think in round three we will take the wood again. We're going to need a second read, but we're probably... Mm, eventually we will go into the fishing spot. We only want to do that once. So you know what? Mm, taking the grain... Oh, the... Somebody asked what the fishing rod does. The fishing rod only costs one wood, but it receives an extra food. So it's basically a lesser version of the raft since the raft will give me a, an additional food or reed. Okay. Oh. Taking the grain, I'm not going to focus on animals, or I'm not going to focus on vegetables, but I do want at least 
one of each. I need a grain and a vegetable, but I can do that later and worry about plowing later. So the occupations, Stable hand eventually, the meat seller eventually, maybe the baker, the grocer, eh, the hedge keeper for sure, but I don't need to play them right now. But it's just a matter of what do we do when. We only have a total of four stables, for, so the stable hand thinking maybe we go, you know what? I don't have a huge, I kind of want to let these accumulate. So I'm going to go ahead and play an occupation. And the occupation is going to be the hedge keeper. So let's go ahead and get ready for whenever we build a fence. So this one is free because it's the first one. Additional ones will have to be food. Okay. So we're just because I'm looking at this going, and the mushroom collector, um, whenever I take wood, I can leave a wood and take two food in exchange. Yeah. The mason is going to be way late game. The stable hand, I don't need right away. The meat seller, until I get an oven, I don't need. And the baker, I don't need. And the grocer, the grocer is somewhat tempting, but it's going to be turning in food for those things. So I don't think so quite yet. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and play the hedge keeper. So the hedge keeper will go ahead and go there. So that is both my actions. The two that I have, I will return home. That's the end of the first round. Easy enough. All right, second round, we flip over new card. That's not the card we were wanting, but there is the bake bread action. And now we refill. Nothing on this board is going to refill, but we will add to that one. So we're going to add two wood to the top space. We add another clay. I was wondering whether or not I should pull these out. A reed and a fish. One fish. Here we go. I really was hoping it would be an improvement card, but alas, it was not. Now, because we are not playing with the Farmers of the Moor, we do not have to heat our buildings, so I don't have to worry about heating. So building a third one during the first one, during the first uh, stage, I don't have to worry about too much, okay? Um, so we do have so now. We could, now, what we could do is we could plow a field and then take the grain, and then on the subsequent turn, we could sow and then take wood here, and then we would be able to fish and then take a reed. But we need six food, and we only had, eh, we would, when we harvest, we would take one grain. That would give us a total of five, I believe, right? That would be four here. Yes, we would be one action short and one food short. And for every food you were short, you get a beggar card, which we do not want. But I think doing that isn't a terrible idea. So let's plow a field. So plowing a field, let's go ahead and go ahead and start up here in the corner. We have plowed a field and then we will go ahead and take a grain and put it into our personal supply. There. Done. All right, new round. Flip over. I'm really hoping this is the improvement card and uh, not the sheep. It is the sheep. That is less than ideal. Okay. We will replenish now. How many of you guys out there have never played Agricola? I'm curious. I've never played Misery Farm. Let 
another read, and another fish. I could put a chicken leg in the in the food in the pond, but well, that's just weird. All right, so we're gonna need five to build, which realistically we're probably not going to build now until stage two because we're gonna need to be able to feed stuff. Now, one thing I have not mentioned is you can have a pet in the building. So in your house, you can have one animal. Whenever you have two or more animals of the same type, uh, they will breed and create more animals of a type, okay? Uh, so we could get a sheep and just throw it out here, but one sheep doesn't help us. But if we were to build fences, we would need to be able to pen in. And there are a total of three different types of animals in the base game. So we have sheep, wild boar, and cattle. So one, two, maybe say three, something like that. We would need one, two, three, four, five, six fences to be able to do that which means we would need six wood. We have four wood plus two. We have this, which would allow us to build four fences. Uh, sorry, three are free. Ew, hold on. But in a perfect world, before we did that, we would like to play the stable hand. But to be able to play the stable hand, we need a food to be able to do that. Hmm. So let's see. How many actions would it take to be able to do this? If we got one sheep, put it in here, and then We could play an improvement here, right? So if we were to go to the raft and get an additional food, that would give us four food, pay three, that'd be four, five. We're still one short. Mm. This is frustrating. What do we do, what do we do, what do we do? And it's just an improvement, right? It is. A major or minor improvement. Which is that there. So I think what we will do is Mama will go and we will play a minor improvement. Because I'm waiting to get a fourth clay to be able to get a cooking hearth, I think. Yes, that is what we're going to do. Um, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Step one. Ah, hold on. So if I were next round to go here and do a cooking hearth and then i could bake bread with the other action but i can't that would be three food if i don't sow that grain and then i fish but i'm one clay short to be ah, i cannot okay No, I am not sure I want to do that. Ah. Uh, you know what? But what if I played the baker? I know this wasn't the original plan, but the baker says during each harvest, if I were to, work with me here. During each harvest, you can bake bread at the start of the feeding phase. 
So after I have harvested that grain, I will be able to get a free bake, which gives me three food. If I have the cooking hearth. Huh. Oh. Thank you. I should have put a sheep out, I guess, technically. That is true. There we go. Um, so you know what? Actually, we're going to sow. Unfortunately, I cannot bake yet. So there's that. This way, I will be able to, and when I do that, I'm going to put two more wheat, two more grain, sorry, on that card or on that tile whenever you sow. So there are, here, I'll do it this way. There are three on there, so whenever we harvest, we will take one off of there, all right? So now, if we were to play, oh, I can't play the other occupation because I don't have the food yet. So I cannot play the baker yet. Ah. Getting the wood now makes sense because I want to wait one on the clay to be able to take the cooking hearth. So I need six food. And I think I'm short one action from what I want to do. If I were to go fishing, but I don't want to fish until I have the raft. Because that gives me an extra, that would be five. And then I could always use the one grain to make up the difference. <sighs> do we pay, but then if we, yeah. Let's go ahead, let's do it. I think, oh, this is brutal. Play a minor improvement, which is going to be my raft. So it cost me two wood to be able to do that. Whenever I use fishing now, I receive an additional food or a reed. Okay, so that's the end of that round. Yep, that game uh, that is played right now is a, yeah, is a Gricola, yeah. What happened to the animal strategy? There's only one animal. We're getting there. We're getting there, Laura, I promise. Okay. Yeah, people are taking your spots. I know seriously, horrible people. All right, new round, we flip, and then we replenish stuff out here. We get a fifth wood, another clay. Oh, this is brutal. Another sheep, a reed. and a fish. Ah. I'm like trying not to flex my hand on my cards and everything. Oh, this is brutal. Um, that's funny. Ah, uh, okay. So we have two actions left and we need six food. We have no food. If we harvest, this would be one. We have a raft now. So we need to get food. Step one, let's get four food. Two, three, four. We can take one additional and we will because of the raft instead of the reed. There should be two. I harvested two, then two, three, four, right? No, it should be five. No. Oh, two, thank you, yes. I'm sorry, add two wood, thank you. Yeah, two, four, six, Dur. So there is my 
fifth food. So now we need one more food, which when we harvest the grain, less than ideal. Um, but we have our food taken care of. We have one action left to do. I have no idea what the hell to do at this point. I don't want to get the sheep because of the fact that uh, I would lose one of them. I don't... Uh, yes, you would lose it. It would run away. Oh. How are we four rounds into this game already? And I've done nothing. All right, we're going to... Oh, I don't know. We're going to... Mm. <laughs> I could get the clay for the cooking hearth, or I could get the wood to be able to build fences. I don't know. Food is more important right now. Let's get the brick the stone, or the clay. Done. Final answer. Boom. Done. That's it. I'm sure, I think. I think, done. All right, so we go into a harvest. There is a harvest at the end of the round. So field phase, take one marker from, uh, from each grain and, and vegetable field. Well, we have this, so whoo, we have a grain. Awesome. Now we have to feed we, uh, one food per newborn, three because of the solo game per. So we have five, and unfortunately we have to turn in the grain into a regular food, so that's going to be six. We have fed our people, and now breed. Done. There we go. That's the end of the first stage. We go into second stage. One stone, okay, there's that. So let's go ahead and throw a stone out. There, two wood, make sure I don't screw that up. That is a ton of wood right there. We add one clay, we add one reed, we add two fish, and one sheep. Okay. All right, step one. We're gonna do a major improvement. We're gonna take the cooking hearth, because food, okay? So we have a cooking hearth, that's gonna cost us our four clay. There. So now, any time that we convert food, uh, you may convert goods into food. So now, uh, if we bake, it's going to be uh, one grain turns into three, but also cooking, so whenever we get animals. So we're good to go, hopefully, on food. That's action number one. Now we're going to want to get the animal stuff going, right? So we have two, four, two, four, six, eight. Uh, we're going to need wood. We're going to need some food. But to be able to play another... Uh, I could make a case for doing two different occupations, okay? A moment, and I will show you what the two occupations are for this. All right, so the two occupations that I'm considering building, or starting, I guess, are that. Because we have the hedge keeper, whenever we build fence, we can build three additional fences. This would be nice to be able to save actions to be able to build a stable. All right, and it's free, but the baker allows us food. So during each harvest, I get a free bake, which basically means that every time when we harvest, I'm going to be able to turn one of these into three food. That's three food less than I have, okay? That makes sense? So, I think the stable hand, because I want to go ahead and start building fences, I think the stable hand makes more sense now and then later on this round we do a baker, I think. So action number two for this round is going to be two fish, 
but because we have the raft, I'm going to grab one additional fish there. Feel good about that. Mama comes back, Papa comes back, done. We go into next stage. So whenever we renovate, so I will show you guys these a little closer. Whenever you renovate, you pay a reed plus one clay per room to turn them into clay huts or two stone houses if you pay stone. And also you can do a major or minor improvement. That's kind of awesome. So turning them into clay early on might not be a terrible idea, but it would require me getting clay. All right. So now we need to replenish everything. So as you can see, this, this hums right along, other than the hemming and hawing, which is happening early and often, I understand, but I feel like I'm channeling my inner Rado. Except all his stuff, he gets to edit all of that. I do not. There, a clay. That is a ton of resources here, and one fish. Oh, did I put one too many fish on there? I apologize. So I will take one back. There should have only been one. Thank you. All right, so there I replenish. We're good. All right. Thank you. Yep. Um, Malgrazada. Thank you for it. Now I understand what you meant. I thought you meant, why did I take? Because the raft. Okay, got it. Thanks, Warren and Malgorzada. All right. So now, two, four, we have a ton of wood, but we have a couple fish. First one is, wow. Yeah, an occupation. We're going to go ahead and put out the stable hand. And the second one is going to be to take that wood. There's three, there's six, that's 10 wood. Well done, all right. Another round, we better have six food at the end of this. All right, family growth. Also a minor improvement. So I have babies. That's always nice. Oh, good call, good call, good call. I forgot. Um, no, wait a minute. Hold on one second. I need to double check something. Yeah, you can only play, you can only play one occupation at a time, right? Just making sure. Yeah, you can only play one. I have to spend one of my food to play the occupation. Thank you. See, I'm not trying to cheat. So, there we go. I've replenished. Here we go. We're gonna build fences, and we're gonna turn that sheep into two food. That's three food, and then turn the grain into three food, which is six. So we're covered on the food, provided we can build fences, and we have sheep. And the sheep will have a baby. At any time, you can convert good, right, yeah. Yeah, okay, just making sure. All right, so, um, you know what? Hey, we're not sexist. Mama's gonna go out and build some fences, that's okay. Hey, she's as capable as he is. All right, so here we go. So it's one wood per fence. However, whenever I build at least one fence, I receive a stable. So we'll put this out here as a reminder. And whenever I build at least one fence, I can build three additional fences without paying an additional wood. Awesome. All right, so let's do this. So we will start, we will go one. I can build up to 13 pieces here. There's three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, yeah, hold on. Ten, eleven, twelve. We could do like thirteen, something like that. Or I guess maybe I think I like that better there and do that. So let's count again. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen for ten pieces of wood and a stable. That's not so bad. It's not so bad. Uh, so I think we will put the stable there, I think. Yeah, all right, so that's all ten wood, but that seems to be an efficient action. I think. Am I sure? Yeah. Now, I could put the stable out here to where now this can hold an animal, but you know what? So each space can hold two animals. So two, four, six of one type, two, four doubled because of the stable, so eight. I can have six of something here and eight of something there. That's not so bad. I did place everything out here, I think. So there we go. So now, Papa's gonna go out, grab some sheep, and we can have up to four per space. So you know what, winter is coming. So let's go ahead and give them all there so it's four per space because of the stable. Feel pretty good about that. Do I feel great about that? No. Do I feel good? I mean, yeah. All right, did you hit me? It's almost like a, like sheep, but not quite. All right, so we harvest, field phase. That comes back in, done. Feeding phase, however, we have a cooking hearth and the cooking hearth says, we'll go ahead and bring it around. Let's go ahead and, again, I, only during a solo stream do I actually manually do this stuff. Oh, that was, Oh, look at me, getting all smooth. There we go, so at any time I can convert goods so that meh is going to become two food. All right, so that one of these meh is gonna become two food. So the two food, it's, well, you know what? I was gonna turn it into fish, but you know what? We have, uh, let's see, there's sheep, so lamb, lamb. Uh, is that lamb chops or like a lamb shank? There we go. So we're eating well in the 17th century, at least. So there's that. So we got two food there. Um, oh, God. Oh, no. Hold on. I forgot to bake. Uh, back that up. I am one action short. How did you people let this happen? You're supposed to be on my side. I, oh God, no, we are, back, we are backing up that whole turn. I don't care, judge me all you want. Are you kidding me? How am I one action short? Oh, God. Oh, you can cook more than one. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Whew. Hold on. I forgot. You can cook more than one. Hold on. Whoo. Oh, did I forget to put out resources? Did I really? There should be three stone. I forgot to put out resources. You're right. So hold up. There. There should be one extra wood. So I'll keep that. Then the clay. One extra sheep. God, you'd think I was new at this. So there we go. We need one more reed. Thank you, guys. One fish. There. The sheep I just took. We're good. 
No, we're good. We're not backing anything up. But just, who does that? Who's going to back anything up? <clears throat> so that's going to be one sheep, two sheep, three sheep for six food. Hey, hey. So there's two lamb chops. And you guys can't see them, but they have like the little chef's hat on the end of the, they really don't, but imagine they do on the end of the leg. So there we go. Yep. And you're right, it's two extra wood. Golly. I'm glad, I, I obviously cannot play this game without you guys, obviously. Hmm. So that begs the question. What if we did that? And we have the two extra wood. Mm, better yet. Because we have two more wood, right? No. We need one more piece of wood to be able to do what I want. I could, though. Ooh, hold on. So if we spend those last two wood on second thought, oh, let's count. So it'd be, it was 30, 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15. There we go. We can have a four there. We have room for field there. I'm good with that. Oh, the two, I'm cheating. They're here. You're right, I did it earlier. So I don't have that. There, done, final answer. No, it's not. Grrr. Yeah, this way I can build a stable. Yes, done. Finally. Okay. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Getting me all flustered. So hold on. We've converted for free that. We harvested here. So now, feed. Six food. One, two, three, four. Five and a fish is six. There we go. And now breed. If there are at least two of an animal, they breed. Now, the question is whether or not they can hold it. If they can't hold it, it runs away. But you can, or we can, so we're good. Done. <sighs> All right. Stage three begins, and now we have wild boar available to us. So now we will replenish. Slow down. Uh, trying to find the boar. Oh, there we are. The boar are there. One stone. Good. We need two wood. One sheep. Good. One reed. Just Lou by himself right there. One fish, and we're good. So now we begin. I'm sure about this now. All right. Sheesh. <clears throat> okay, some tea, a moment. Getting all flustered. Mm. Excellent cup of tea. Orange Pico today. All right. I would like to wait on the boar so that they can have babies. We need food. We need to be able to bake. I would like to be able to get the baker out because then we can bake uh, whenever we harvest. So, if I do an occupation that allows me to get three food, I then can turn one of the sheep 
The whole reason for the hearth was kind of to be able to double up on the baking whenever I want. Huh. I could take the clay. Hmm. Getting ahead of myself a little bit. I could take the clay and renovate, but then I could do a minor improvement. So the minor improvements would be Well, there is that, which means we should extend our room before doing the clay, maybe? I don't know, because that's going to cost us five wood. Oh, boy. But... Uh, Oh. We need five clay to be able to build the, uh, I don't know what to do. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and do the baker as the improvement or as the occupation so that now we can bake uh, whenever you play this card, you can bake bread as an additional action, so I will. So I will turn this into three food. There we go. So that's done. Now we have the baker. I am sure. I am positive 100% on that. All right, so for the second action, That's a ton of reads. Like, I would be good for reads for the entire game. But if I go to the fishing pond, I would get three food and then a read. But one read doesn't help me. I need two reads. If I get clay, I could renovate those to clay but then I would need more clay to be able to extend it, whereas the wood is going to acquire, or is going to go faster. But to be able to do that, I need to be able to do the builder's trowel. Yeah, but it saves in action with the renovate. I don't know. Yes, misery farm at its finest. Exactly, Sergio, exactly. There should be one more fish. Really? How am I screwing this up? It should, it's only one fish per. Yeah, I did the, okay, thank you, I did the fish. You guys are, man! All right, what do we do? So to renovate, if I renovate after I build, if I build a third wooden building, or room, okay? So let's slow down. I need to build a room so that I can take more actions. I am hella late on doing that. I got to get a third building. I can always renovate here or, or I could do the builder's trial there. But there's only four wood. I need five wood to be able to build a new room. So I'm not going to take the wood this turn. I'm going to need reeds to be able to do it. So mom is going to take the reeds, which is a ridiculous amount of reads. Done, final answer. They come back. I, there will be a harvest at the end of this, taking a vegetable here. So I'm just going to throw a veggie on that as a reminder, okay? So we now have a boar. Then we have a stone, nothing two wood, one clay, one sheep, a reed, which I cannot imagine ever needing again. Remember I said that, I'm sure you guys will, and one food. Done, there. A boar, so that these guys can have babies. Done. Now what? 
The plan was to build a room. I need wood to be able to build a room. I'm going to have enough food. I'm good. Let's take the wood. I think. Are you sure you want to do that? No, I'm not sure about anything at this point. I am not. Thank you, peanut gallery in person. Done. Final answer. They come back. I am playing terribly. There is the basket maker. In each harvest, you can use the basket maker's workshop to convert at most one reed for three food. At the end of the game, you receive a one, two, three bonus points for having extra reeds. So that's a good point for up here. That's a very good point. Thank you, Craft Dragon. All right. So now we will harvest. So take one. So there goes there. Then uh, we're going to eat a sheep, which is going to turn into two food. And then I have to pay my six food. I have six food, so we're good there. Okay, and now we breed. We have a baby boar and we have a baby sheep. All right, feel like we're making some amount of progress, finally, okay? All right, so into stage four. Hey, we have cows. A boar and a cow comes out, okay? Ridiculous amount of stone, which we're going to need here in a little bit. We have another sheep, two wood, one clay, and one more fish. There we go. Yes, Laura says, uh, there's some sort of perverse joy in watching a poor man's soul come out his ears in indi indecisiveness. Yes. Oh, boy. All right. I need to, I, I, I need to have a baby. So, we're going to build a room. So, Mama's going to come over here. We're going to build a wooden hut. That's going to be five. That's five, and two reeds, and we now have room for a baby. I feel like this is kind of backwards. There, because you know what? There we go. Let me make sure I can play my minor improvement. I can. Yes. All right. So, family growth, hey, congratulations, we had a baby. Okay. Technically, the baby goes here because I cannot use them in the first year. Okay. Um, a moment, I wanna check something. Question is, do I have the baby now or do I wait? It would give me one extra action, but I have to. Re it requires me two more food. The boar is going to get me three. Five. I think I, oh boy. Hmm. Oh, I am playing terrible. Um, 
I'm not going to have the baby yet. We're going to wait on that till next round. That way we don't have to take as much food. So hold on, I'm just setting aside the stuff that I'm never going to use just to get it out of my hand so I don't need to worry about it. Oh no, did I really screw this up? I totally did, didn't I? I just realized I only have two fences left. So if that's the case, there, that makes more sense. Yep, there we go. Uh, all right. Oh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? So I think when we do this, the minor improvement is going to be you can renovate your wooden hut into a clay hut at any time without taking the renovate action, but you have to pay for the renovation. So if that's the case, I think the smart thing to do is mama's gonna come over here and take the clay. There, final action, there and there. All right, so there will be another harvest at the end of this round. Another stone, this one also Big fingers, small compartments. There we go. So we get a stone on that. We get a cattle. We get a boar. How, is, how are we already this far along? I don't know. We get another stone. We get two more wood. We get another clay. A reed. A sheep. And a fish. There we go. All right, now, Mama comes over. We're gonna have a baby. We're gonna build the builder's trowel, which will cost us one wood. And it says, you can renovate your wooden hut to a clay hut at any time without using the renovate action. So you know what? We're going to go ahead and do that right now. So I'm just, since it's a one-time use essentially, is I'm going to go there and to renovate, uh, I need one reed and one clay per. So three clay and one reed. These will flip over to the clay side. Points, yay. So there we go. Then, Just getting ready for the stone house extension if we're able to get it out, okay? And yeah, this is just out here as a reminder. That's it. This doesn't replenish. So there we go. Okay, no red arrow, so it doesn't replenish. Um, oh, golly. Okay, so we have one more action. We're going to be able to have, we need seven food. Seven. I could 
take that and use it, turn that into three food with the baker and the cooking hearth. That will be worth three, that's six, and we could turn that into two, that would be eight. But I really don't wanna use my last grain in a perfect world. I would like to be able to sow that. But if I sow it, oh wait, actually I can. Oh, if I sow it, yeah, that, there you go. There's, there is, I don't get to use the baked bread, unfortunately. Mm, hold on. I did pay a wood, Tony. I had one left. Ah. Uh, if there were, ooh. Animals are worth points. Up to four, right? No. Seven and eight respectively or worth four points a piece. So what I'm wondering is do I take the fish, cause this is six fish, but I get an additional, that would be seven. That would be my free feed. Because if I plant now and harvest, hmm, and then I could plant that. Nope, we're gonna stay on target. We're gonna go ahead Yep, there, and I will put two more, there. Yep, done, final answer, all right. So we go into a harvest, and a harvest says, remove one of these, done. Then feed. Well, I currently have no food. So I'm going to turn this into three food. I'm going to turn a boar into three food. And I'm going to turn a sheep into two food. Not doing that. A moment. No, wait, right here. I am gonna take this. So that's gonna be six fish, plus I get the extra one fish for going there because of the raft. So there's seven, there's my seven food. So this way, I don't have to eat my animals and I keep my grain. Done. Yes. Done. So we're going to now breed because feeding sucks and is difficult and I would prefer to keep that. And then I have a plan for the rest of this. There we go. There we go. Into the 12th round. Family growth, even without space in your home. That's nice. Okay. Okay. So now let's replenish. We need another moo cow. A stone, a stone, a boar, two wood, a clay, a 
a sheep, a reed, a fish, done. All right. All right. Uh, I need to build two fences, which I have two left, and then get the cows up there. I want to renovate this, but I have a minor improvement. I have two minor improvements that I would love to be able to do in a perfect world. The mason says at any time after your stone house reaches at least four rooms, that's not going to happen. The, uh, the stone house extension, when you play this card, immediately extend your stone house by one room. It costs a reed and three stone. Well, to renovate to a stone is going to require three stone and a reed. Okay. We're going to take some stone, and by some stone, I mean a plethora of stone. Okay. Then we're going to renovate, and that's one stone and a reed. I already paid the reed, so that's going to be one, two, three stone. Done. And those will become stone buildings, stone rooms. And, oh, look, hey, they're playing Agricola. And I can play a minor improvement when I do that. So I will play said minor improvement. I will pay one reed and three stone. When you play this card, immediately extend your stone house by one room. The room doesn't cost anything, but I have to pay. And then this card goes out of the game. So that's awesome. So that'll be one reed and three stone there. So we get a fourth stone room. There, that's awesome. So that's out of the game. Okay. Okay. Take care, Jordan. So now what? Uh, we could do fences. We could do, I don't want to do family growth until the end of that. Um, because food. I do need, let's see, if I take the vegetable, then I plow and sow, that would be one, two, three, and I have a fourth action between this and next round. And the fourth action might be there, and actually... It would require four wood. The riding plow requires three occupations, which I have three. And the riding plow actually might not be a terrible idea to do here as well. It would require, so that fourth action would be Whenever I plow a field, uh, plow and or sow, which is going to be the next one, I could plow three fields instead of one. So I think that's what we do. So we're going to take the wood to plan to do that. 
because we're going to need the wood to be able to do that. I think my math is working out without studying too terribly long. So end of the round. Hey, plow one field and or so. Wow, weird. All right. So we have a stone, one of each animal. Oh, this is going to be tense. I don't know if this is going to work. All the animals are done. There we go. We get another stone. We need two wood because solo game, one clay, one reed, one fish. Okay. So, mama, family growth, we will have a baby. We have room for said baby and a minor improvement. The minor improvement will be that riding plow, which requires four wood. There's three and four and three occupations, which we have. Then the second action is this, the child is going to go out and plow three fields because we're allowed to do so. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we can see, uh, hold on. I will have done that first and then we will sow. Good. So then we will get one additional carrot for that and we will get two more grain on that there. So we have sowed. Take care, Dave. All right. Don't know if we're going to have enough food, but we're going to figure it out. Here we go. So we come back. So I'm going to put this one, stand that up because that's only one food. So it's going to be a total of 10 food. So then we have a harvest. Harvest says I get to take that and that. I'm allowed to cook whatever I need and I can bake because of the baker. So I will bake that for three food. So there's three. I will turn this boar into three more food. We're at six. I will turn two sheep into 10 total food, which is the 10 that I owe. Boom, done. Then they have babies. There and there. And now the kid lays down. Done. Final round. After renovating, you can also do fences, but renovation's kind of done for me. All right. Whew. All right. Let's replenish. So we have four actions and the game's over. That happens quick in the solo game. Oh my God. That's a lot of sheep. Uh, then we need two stone. One there, one there. I'm going to go ahead and put a carrot down even though I'm not going to use it. We get a fish. We get a reed. We get a clay. And we get two wood. Wood, not food. All right. I am not a uh, termite. We have four actions. End of the game. So, reminder. The end of the game. We're going to get hit for that. So be it. Um, we're not going to renovate. Now, I could, hold on, I could do the mason, and that costs one food. At any time after your stone house reaches at least four rooms, you may extend it by one room at no cost. That's the mason. I really would like to be able to do it, but I require food. Well, that would be four of the food. That's one of the actions. The second is an occupation, which is two actions. Then I have two left. The third would be family growth. All 
Oh. If I did the family growth, I could also do the fishing rod, which would give me two additional food. So that would be five of the 12 food that I need. Six of the, that would be half the food. Wow. Okay. I need cattle. Okay, so let's go through this. Let's check this out. If I did an occupation, that would be the mason, which puts down a fifth one. Then if I did family growth, I could do the fishing rod, but I couldn't do the occupation until I got the food. So if I did the fishing rod, which requires one wood, which I have, then I would build fences and take cattle. I think that's it. I think, I think that's what I'm doing. I have two fences left right here for cows. You know what? Let's do it. So we're going to, mama's going to go, family growth, the final kid. I don't have room. I can't do this in the order I want because I'm short food. Son of a. because I want to be able to do the minor improvement. I need to build fences. There and there. I need the cattle, which one, two, three, four. That's all I'm allowed. The last one runs away. Oh, wait, at any time, I can turn the veggie into three food. So I will do that. Turn that into three food. Then, then, I will go for the occupation. The occupation will be the mason, which allows me to build a stone. When I'm at four, I can do a fifth. Then, Mama will come over for family growth, have the baby, and I can play a minor improvement, but I'm one action short. Son of a... But that's all right. Well, yeah, I'm one short. I needed five actions, didn't I? Yep. Oh, right. Last cow can become a pet, because who doesn't want Bessie in the house? Um... I guess I could play this. The bean field is whenever I sow, I can plant vegetables on this card, but it's worth a point and it requires two occupations, so boom, done. That's the end of my game. Done. All right, so now we have the field phase. Take a marker from each, there and there. Okay, so then I have to feed. Okay, so I need two, four, six, I'm sorry, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13 food. I have three. I need 10 more food. Looking at, let's see, the cows, I have four, so I want to try and keep that at that. The boar, I want at least three, so I will eat a boar. And the sheep, I would like to not eat, but I'm going to have to eat something. So the boar is going to become three food. So we're at six. The grain is going to become three food. We're at nine. So there's nine. I'm not eating that. I guess the cow is going to become four food. The nine, yeah. That's 13 food right there. So I've paid all my stuff. I forget, they have babies. There, that's the end of the game. Oh, you're right. I should have gotten a stable as well. Good call. So we'll throw that there, and we don't have a pet. Good call. Thank you, Warren, because of the stable hand when I built the fence. Good call. There we go.
Awesome. I forget how I, I, I did, or I shouldn't say I forget. I didn't realize how quickly, uh, how quick this game plays as a solo. Okay. All right. So let's go through this now. So plowed fields. We get one point. Uh, no, sorry. Hold on. Depending on the number of fields. So I have. Four plowed fields. So four plowed fields. You know what? Let's go ahead and zoom that out just a hair. Hold on. There. I think this is the easiest way to do that. All right. So plowed fields. I have four. So that's three points. Then fenced pastures, what do we have? We have one, two, three, I believe, right? I believe that's how it's counted in not, uh, not how many areas it is. So it's one, two, three, okay? So three fenced pastures is going to be another three points. Okay, then grain. I have one grain, one grain is a point. I have one vegetable, which is a point. So that's one and one. How many sheep? We have four sheep. Four sheep is going to be worth two points. And then boar and cattle. So I have four boar and five cattle, four boar is going to be two points, and five cattle is going to be worth three points, respectively. So that is two and three. Okay. Unused spaces. We don't lose any because of that fifth one. Awesome. Fence stables. We have two for each fenced-in stable. So that's, oh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, there. So it's going to be two points for that. Clay hut rooms, none. However, stone, we're going to get two points per stone. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay. And then family members, three points per. Let's go and pull them back. One, two, three, four, five. That would be 15 points. And then we have points for cards and bonus points. All right, well, let's take a look, shall we? So all the cards that we've played. So I'll go and do it over here. We get nothing for that. We get nothing for that. There's one, nothing, nothing, two, three, Nothing and nothing. So three points. Just three. All right. So let's add it up. What do we have? We have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen, seventeen, twenty-seven, twenty-seven, thirty-two, forty-two, forty-five. I'm just saying we set a goal of thirty-five. Or no, we set a goal of forty-five. We added ten. We hit the goal, hot damn, I did not lose. I don't care whether or not I would be able to advance in the scenario. We weren't playing the scenario. I set a goal of 45, over, under, on 45. Nailed it. Yes! Success! I will take that because that looked highly suspect as the game started out. I mean... That was ugly early on, I thought. Whew. All right. Two hours. Full, well, somewhat full teach. And hella indecisiveness. I'll take that. That's good. And let's face it. Look at this. Like, that turned out to be 
It started out with just two little wooden hut and nothing. And look at it. That turned out pretty good, huh? Nice. Exactly, Eric. We go in Sizzler. White men can't jump reference. So, yeah, that was a blast. Um, Agricola stays, it has remained since the very first time I played it. One of my all-time favorite games. It is the quintessential worker placement game. I think it is a classic for a reason. It has 934 different expansion decks. It's only a slight exaggeration. It's phenomenal. There's a reason uh, Misery Farm is called Misery Farm. Is It is a miserable experience. Uh, subsistence farming in the 17th century apparently was, you know, life or death and was not easy. This game, I mean, it, obviously it's... I'm not going to die if I fail in the game, but it's abstracted, but it, it feels stressful when you're playing it. Like, I don't know that this is fun. It's fun. It's enjoyable. I don't know if it's fun, right? But I do enjoy this game, and this is the best I've ever done in this game. Thankfully, no one was blocking me. So in multiplayer, blocking becomes a huge thing, and maximizing and being efficient, um, is an amazingly difficult thing, and it's phenomenal multiplayer. I loved it as a solo game. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, I only played, I only did one of the major improvements. I have no idea how many people normally do whenever they do this. I only did one. Uh, the bake shop, uh, or the basket maker's workshop would have been awesome, but ended up all right. Could I have done better? I'm sure, I have no doubt. But uh, yeah, phenomenal game. Um, yeah, just, just so good. Farmers of the Moor, I don't feel is required, but kinda. Uh, Farmers of the Moor multiplayer, it, it just, it w rounds out the entire game. It feels like it introduces horses. It introduces some special actions or additional action as cards. Uh, uh, the feed in heat you have to do, so not only do you have food, but you have heating that you have to do. You have to heat your build, your house as well. Uh, so good. I thoroughly enjoy Farmers of the Moor when playing multiplayer, but when I do this again, and I'm going to do this again, because let's face it, the solo stuff's gonna go on for a while, as well as multiplayer stuff over, uh, over Skype and whatever, we're gonna be doing that on the channel as well. But I'm going to be introducing another deck, I'll be doing Farmers of the Moor, all that as we go along. That was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, because I had a blast. I say it's not fun, it's fun. It's, it's agonizing, but to me that's fun. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, so, and, and apparently some folks have said the app is phenomenal at this, which is fine, but I just don't want to do that. Like, I, if I want to play a board game, I want to be sitting at a table and I want to play a board game. I don't want to play a video game. If I want to play a video game, I'm not going to play a board game. I'm going to play like Horizon Zero Dawn or Skyrim or like Fallout, something like that. That's me. Online implementation slash apps slash all that stuff. If you guys enjoy it, please do. Play games. Play what you dig. I've said that all along. But for me, if I'm going to play a board game, it's got to be the physical version. It just doesn't scratch the same itch and it just feels wonky to me. And that's kind of why whenever we do other streams, multiplayer, uh, whenever we do one, we're going to start next week doing these like via Skype. Um, could we do Tabletopia? Could we do? Yes but we're not gonna. I, uh, I'm going to do it. I'm gonna have the board set up here. I'm gonna move people, pieces for them, the whole nine yards, because it's going to be too hard otherwise. Uh, and it just won't feel good to me. So that's how we're gonna do it. So, cause I enjoy board games for the physical tactile aspect of it. I just love that. So there we go. All right. Um, yeah, and uh, Boogie said, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the rest of that. Boogie says it's just better with Farmers of the Moor. I agree. I think it's a better game with Farmers of the Moor. Um, it just well, it, it just rounds out Agricola into just a full, wonderful experience. Um, I don't know how it does solo, but I'm going to find that out the next time we do this. It's going to be a couple weeks. I'm not going to do it like in back-to-back -back weeks, but, uh, but yeah, um, good stuff. Um, 
Yeah, and Jonathan says, I just finished Gaia Project on Tabletop Simulator. It's still excellent, but I miss the, it being tactile. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. Play what you dig. But for me, I want the physical aspect of the game. So there you go. That is Agricola, a classic, a Hall of Fame, absolute six on my one to six scale, and it's wonderful. Uh, some people prefer Caverna. Those people have a right to be wrong. That's fine. Uh, no, play what you dig, right? Um, I love how tight this is. I, I love Misery Farm, and this will stay and will always be for the four C. I can't imagine Uwe Rosenberg beating this and doing better than Agricola. Uh, I challenge him to try and do so, but he's, or at Labor is the closest, I think, that he's come. And or at Labor needs, needs more decks. That's it. Um, so yeah, there you go. That is Agricola, Misery Farm. So thank you everybody watching. I definitely appreciate you guys hanging out on a Saturday with me. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I certainly did. I, I had a blast. I thank you for all the help as well, Peanut Gallery, but also just for hanging out. Um, this is outside of just, this is kind of my interaction with, with people. So I really, really appreciate this. If you guys did not see uh, my cocktail hour last night with uh, acclaimed board game designer, Mark Herman, I did one the previous week with Clay Ross of Capstone Games. Check those out. I'm going to be releasing them on the podcast uh, later on, probably next week. So one next week and one the following week, whatever. So keep an ear out for that over on heavycardboard.com or your favorite podcast app. Last but not least, give me a thumbs. We want your thumb. I can't do it like Martin does. Just give me a thumb down below. I appreciate it. It helps the channel. Subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified. And you know what? We didn't get a single new patron during that stream. Let's fix that, guys. Go to pledgehc.com, support the show there. If you think what I do here on the channel is worth a buck or two, hell, if you think the last two hours of entertainment was worth it, I'd appreciate a buck or two a month for it. Um, go to pledgehc.com, support the show there. Everyone, social distance, stay safe at home, self-isolate, however it is you want to word that. Be smart, be safe. We're in this together. Let's make the best of it. Come hang out with me. I'll hang out with you. And I'll see you tomorrow, same time, 2 p.m., solo stream of my number one game of all time, Age of Steam. So you guys be safe. Have a great rest of your Saturday. And I will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody. Can't believe I didn't lose. Woohoo!